Trust me, you don't want to miss this. Wukong is one of the best champions in all of TFT. Although he did end up ruling the jungle, he didn't start out as the Coconut King. It all started back in set 3, where Wukong was more of a background character than the main event. As a tank with a chrono trait, his ability was just him smashing enemies into the air. He was the guy that you just throw into your comp if you needed some frontline. But let's be real, set 3 was not his set. It was like he was in the minor leagues, just waiting for his big break. Watching from the sidelines as the big bananas like Jin and Kale hogged the spotlight. But in 3.5, Wukong found himself in a prime position. With the introduction of the Astro trait to pair him with Nautilus, suddenly you had a beefy frontline that could tank entire boards. But the real magic happened when you added four snipers to a mix, turning their board into an artillery line of doom. Teemo got the astro buff, Jin got his dark star power, and Wukong, he became the premier tank, the guy that you could rely on to soak up all the damage and knock everyone up while your snipers killed everyone else. It was a taste of what to come, but the real show was still on the horizon. Enter set 4, where this little Diddy Kong transformed into... <laughs> A name that will go down in TFT history. Love it or hate it, Bonk Kong was a whole vibe. His divine trait gave him a massive chunk of damage and survivability, turning him into a spammable stun machine that could almost always win a 1v1. But let's be honest, set 4 was a bit of a slow start for our boy. People weren't really optimizing him yet, and other comps like Warwick, Dusk and Moonlight were the ones that people were really playing. But once those got nerfed and someone figured out the super secret build, Wukong started popping up everywhere. And by patch 10.25, when he got a huge buff, his play rate skyrocketed. And then came 4.5, where Bonky Kong truly took center stage. The meta was dominated by one cost reroll comps, and Wukong was right in the thick of it. His ability to use Nasus for Siphoner or Vanguard Mystics, depending on what you hit, was invaluable. It was a strategy so versatile, all you needed was a three star Wukong to make it work. Did you hit Sejuani and Atrox? Vanguard Mystic. Did you hit Morgana? Siphoner time. Dual Dispat. Well, Congratulations, you've now turned Bonky Kong into a rapid fire coconut gun, and now you're really cooking. Yeah. Wukong was so disgustingly strong that even with nerves, his play rate remained insane. But his strongest form? Oh no, did you? We're just getting started. Fast forward to 7.5, where Bonky Kong made his triumphant return. This time, though, he was rocking Jade and Warrior. And without the Divine buff and the Vanguard Mystic survivability, he became more of a glass cannon. Slap an RFC on him, and he would pop enemy skulls like Bonky Kong smashing barrels. Sure, while he wasn't as dominant as Dragon Monster Nu Nu, he had his moments. Playing Wukong in this set was like driving a sports car. It was fast, it was fun, but one wrong move and you're spinning out of control. But man, he was cool. Set 8 brought hero augments into the mix, and with it, a whole new Bonky Kong. Now, he was sporting mecha and defender traits, and if you hit the right augment with a few good items, he wasn't Bonky Kong anymore, he was a Gundam wing mech monkey that could one-shot entire enemy boards. The mecha trait elevated his fantasy to insane heights, and his ability to whirlwind the enemies was a spectacle. Stack as many defenders as you could, and Wukong became completely unkillable with a million HP, ready to kill every single champion on the other board. And if you didn't play him, you're probably going to get demolished by someone who did. Set 8.5 was still good for Wukong, and it wasn't just about his traits. As with all of the previous sets, if you hit the right augments, he really became incredibly strong. Something like Axiomark, everyone's favourite. Suddenly, Wukong became an unstoppable chain bopping monkey with a vengeance. It was like watching a monkey go bananas in the best way possible. Sure, other champions were strong, but Wukong had that it factor. He wasn't just a monkey mech Bonky Kong anymore, he was a force of f***ing nature. Set 11 marked a historic moment. Wukong became the first ever 5 cost monkey, and oh boy, that was a game changer. With his great trait alternating between different abilities, he could bop like a set 1 form, been around like a set 8 form, or he could just extend his staff and grow to epic proportions. This was the embodiment of the sun god Wukong's fantasy. A heavenly sage sent from the gods to defeat your enemies. His heavenly buff gave him a small attack speed, which every comp needs. His sage trait had a little bit of healing to keep his allies in the fight, and at 3 star, his animation was nothing short of 
spectacular. He truly felt like a god and playing him was an experience in itself. But what really made this set stand out for Wukong was his versatility. He wasn't just a one trick potent, I mean monkey. You could easily fit him into any comp as much as he carried your team to victory. Whether you were using him as a primary carry or just using him to tank hits, he always found a way in and a way to make himself useful. And now we've arrived at set 12 where Wukong is back once again. This time as the first traitless champion since the days of threat. He's a 3 cost unit now, which means he's pretty easy to 3 star. And don't let the lack of traits fool you, he's got a ton of stats to make up for it. His defining characteristic though is that he scales with armor and MR, so get some tank items on him, maybe a preserver emblem, and watch him become unkillable while still doing pretty good damage. He's an unstoppable spinning top. Hit his hero augment, congratulations, now he's a carry. But let's be real, his tank form is still vastly superior at the moment, but I'm pretty sure in a couple patches that won't be the case. He absolutely steals the show and is almost always the tank that you want to play around and it's only a matter of time before someone breaks the meta with him. So where do I rate him? Wukong gets three bananas out of a monkey nut. Thank you guys, especially Alan.